Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so glad to be bringing you God's truth today. Can we pray, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ? Thank you for the spirit of utterance. Oh, your wisdom is filling our hearts. And I declare every yoke is destroyed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Burdens are being lifted right now. Thank you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Now we've been on 1 Corinthians chapter, uh, we're in chapter 6 right now. And I told you we're going to continue this as long as the Holy Spirit permits us to go on this. And let's see how he, he's going to help us with this. Now, I, I, I shared something with you yesterday how, in the instruction Jesus gave concerning what we are reading in chapter 6. And I showed you yesterday the authority that the church has. See, when when we, we he, he said if two of us shall agree as touching anything. Now, he wasn't just talking. Now, I know we use that to pray um, when we need something. It's okay, let's agree and, and pray that God will give us this thing. It also means in, in exercising our authority. I'm telling you the truth. The church can come together and say, Lord, we don't want this situation. We don't want this law anymore. And we need to agree on it. Now, when he says, if two of you shall agree, I don't like, you know, not the, the one, the pastor says, I don't like this thing. And then all the members say, we don't like it too. And let's pray against it. Most times, you see, we, we, we jump into all these conclusions without realizing what we are doing. When Jesus says, two of you shall agree, see, agree with what? Agree with the mind of God. Agree with the counsel of God. So if there is something we don't like, what do we do? How do we form that agreement? We take the wisdom of God. We take God's word. We bring forth testimonies. See, testimony is very important. Now, when I say testimony, I'm not saying, oh, brother, I didn't have a car before yesterday. And God blessed me with a car. That's not even the testimonies I'm doing. Testimony of what? What God has said. So someone comes and says, this is the this is the wisdom of God concerning this matter. Why is it the wisdom of God concerning this matter? Because two years ago, the Lord taught me something in this line. And this is how it came about. And that's a testimony. So when, when the, even if the government brings a law and the church wants to end that law, the church wants to put that law aside, we can. We have that authority. How do we do it? We come into agreement. We look at that law. And then we see exactly where that law is opposed to God's word and God's children. We see it, we bring it out. And then when we bring it out, I'm not just saying we don't like it. I'm not speaking about speculation. We don't do speculation in the things of God. We don't speculate. When you speculate, God has no, God's not even going to listen, listen to you. You know why? Because God confounds everything before he takes action. Don't you know? You remember Sodom and Gomorrah. What did God say when he met Abraham? He said, I have heard. I am now come down to see for myself if those things that I've heard is so. Couldn't he have listened or seen from heaven? He said, I have come down to see for myself. That's God's character. See, that's how I always tell people, look, emotions doesn't do the job. You must be factual. You must do things in truth. So you take up that situation and you say, you know what? This part of this law is opposed to God's word. Because the Lord taught me this, or the Lord said this to me. That is where testimony comes in. You look at the scriptures, the scripture says this. Now, why is testimony important? Because many times we even misunderstand scriptures. So, scriptures must be backed up by testimony. You need to understand what I'm saying. Now, what do I mean testimony? I said testimony is not, I didn't have a car, or I was sick yesterday, now I'm healed. That's not the kind of testimony we're talking to talking about now. We are talking about testifying that what the Lord has said to you, you believe it and it is true. So, so scripture says something. I come with my testimony. What am I testifying? That the scripture is true. That is testimony. So I bring my own revelation from the Lord and we compare it with scriptures and we realize that it is true. So it enforces what the scripture says. 
and it brings light to what the scripture says. See? So we look at that. And, and when we have these testimonies, then we stand in agreement based on the word of God. And we declare that in null and void. And it's gone. It's gone. Oh, oh, the Lord will see to it. That's what Jesus is saying. So let's not hold on that scripture in just the area. I need a car, brother. Come and agree with me that the Lord will give me a car. You know, husband and wife, oh, we need a new house. Let's agree. Yes, it's wonderful. But it goes beyond that. We look at the situation and say, look, this our brother has suffered in the hands of this sister. This our sister has suffered in the hands of this man. Let's go into the situation and handle it. And you do everything Jesus said, and you don't get any good response from one party. Now, what do you do? We can't let our brother suffer like this. This is not the mind of God. This is not the will of God. So you know what? And, and you know, if that person is godly, the moment you say, hey, we're going to cut off fellowship with you. Oh, the person should beg. I'm telling you. Punishment in church. You know, say you're suspended. You're going to be sweeping the church every Monday for the next three months. That's not punishment. That's not how you punish someone who's head in the church. You know how you punish someone who's head in the church? You threaten them with cutting off fellowship. <laughs> it's God. And, and you see, now, oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, what do you mean cut off fellowship? Now, you understand when he says, we shouldn't forsake the assembly of the saints. Now, that scripture is not just talking about going to church. I know lots of people you interpret to mean we must congregate as a church. No, he, he is talking about he says make sure you are always in the midst of believers make sure you get into a new place look for believers look for believers in the neighborhood find believers and begin to fellowship what do i mean fellowship with them not no let's start having morning devotion in the morning no that's not what i'm talking about you 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 have something in your mind you run it through them say ah, i've been praying about this thing what do you think about it can you help me pray and see what the Lord will say concerning it? Oh, I will. I will. And then he prays. And I say, you know that's what we're talking about. This is, this is the mind of God concerning This is the scripture the Lord gave me concerning it. That's how believers function. So we say, don't, don't forsake the bread. So come to church. And people come to church. And there is no fellowship in church. Many times in church, there is no fellowship in church. So you go to church. You enter the usher. You sit down. You sit down. Oh, rise up. It's time for praise and worship. You rise up. And then you praise. You lift up your hands. You sing. And then the preacher comes. And he preaches. And oh, praise God. Amen. Amen. Oh, I'm blessed today. I'm blessed today. And then you leave. Fellowship didn't take place. Fellowship is when I bring forth what is in me. That's what Paul said in, in chapter 15. I, if God permits us to get to that place, you see it. He said, when you all gather, everyone, chapter 14, sorry, everyone has a psalm. Everyone has a wisdom. Everyone has a word. Something. Everyone is coming to, with something. So you put the matter up. Hey, we, we've got this matter. And someone comes up and says, hey, I think the Lord has already given me wisdom concerning this issue. Oh, really? Please, can you share with us? This is what the Lord taught me concerning this. And he opens our eyes and we're like, wow. So, so do we all agree that this is the mind of God? Yes, this is the mind of God. Now we are in agreement. Based on that agreement, now we take a stand. Praise God. All right. Oh, dear Lord Jesus. We're in verse 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 4. He says, if then you have judgment of things pertaining to this life, set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church. Now, now here he is actually saying, look, <laughs> you need to understand. I think you need to read this from maybe the Amplified or other translation. He said, look, you know, in the church, when we congregate, you don't give important things to a baby Christian to judge, right? You don't say a baby Christian to come and mediate over a situation. You don't do that. You need someone with sound judgment, right? Now it says, how come in the church you're careful to get a matured person to look at the issue and then you are still the same one 
that will take a believer to one who's not born again. And whatever judgment that one gives, he says it is fine. Now look at what he said in verse 1. I speak to your shame. Is it so that there is not a wise man among you? No, not one that shall be able to judge between his brethren. How come? But brother goeth to law with brother, and that before the unbelievers. Now therefore it is utterly a fault among you, because ye go to law with one another. Why do you not rather take wrong? Why do you not rather suffer yourself to be defrauded? See, be careful what you bring yourself under. Be careful who you, whose authority you bring yourself under. Because you become their slave. That's the truth. That's what the scripture says. So, so you, you look around you and there was no brother wise enough, no sister wise enough to look into the issue and take a stand for the Lord Jesus Christ. And then you say, we are going to the unbelievers. Now, does that mean all the judges in our law courts are unbelievers? No. But you see, even a believer is guarded by certain laws by which he will take his judgment from. He takes the laws of the land and then he has to pattern his laws, his judgment according to the laws. So what if the law does not create for your situation? There's a big problem. Praise God. There's a problem. Now, he said, look, instead of you to go before unbelievers, Nice. Even judges, for example, judges who are believers, when you see two believers come before you, you see, because before you were made a judge, it is expected that you've gotten some level of maturity, a level of understanding. So as a believer, your, your level of understanding in your profession should match your spiritual understanding. So as a judge, when you, you, you find out that two believers have brought a, a matter before you, you take the cue and say, look, I believe instead of going through all this legal process, we can settle this thing amicably in my chambers. Can, can we meet in my chambers? And you sit down with them and show them scriptures and deal with the issue. This is how you fight for the kingdom of God. Using your position. You don't sit there and start, okay, yes, yes, according to section this and section this of the criminal code. or the, you, you settle it amicably within them. Now, that doesn't mean you, you shield the wrongdoer. No, that's not. I'm talking about when two brothers have a civil issue. Praise God. All right. So he says, Paul actually said that, look, it is better you even allow yourself to be defrauded than to go submit yourself under the authority of, the, of an unbelieving judge. Hmm. Verse 8. Nay, you do wrong. And defraud, and that your brethren. Know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Now he is, he is talking to the one who did wrong now. So he is not just saying this to support. Yeah, at least I know if I if I do this brother wrong, I know he will not take me to court. He's pastor that will settle it. And I know, I know pastor, I know how to talk to pastor. Now that, that you now he is correcting that fellow now. So he says, Know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor adulterers, ad adulterers, nor adulterers, adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of them with mankind. Did you see that? Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. I've got to stop here, but I'm going to continue from here tomorrow praise god this is deep and i don't want us to rush it until tomorrow have a wonderful day bye bye